All right, so for our product research, in order for us to see all the data that we need to see for the products that we're gonna look at, we're gonna need to use a tool which is called Jungle Scout. So this is really pretty much the only tool that you really need uh, when selling on Amazon. I don't even know anybody who is selling on Amazon who doesn't use this tool. So this is definitely something you wanna get. Um, I was able to get you a discount for Jungle Scout. So I reached out to them and they created a special landing page for fans of Medix Media, as you can see here. And there, as you can see, you're gonna get a discount of up to 30% for, uh, for Jungle Scout. And you also get a seven day money back guarantee. Now, this is also the plan that you need here to access all the features that we need for product research and also later on for our keyword research. So make sure you get this tool. I'm gonna to leave the link down below in the description to this page right here where you can get the discount. Now, we also gonna to need to install the Chrome extension because they have their own platform, which I'm gonna show you in a moment here. And then they also have a Chrome extension where if you install it on your browser, you're gonna see a lot more information on the Amazon platform itself. Then you wanna to go to Google, go to Jungle Scout Chrome extension. If you're using Chrome, if you're using Firefox, then type in Firefox and then just search um, this. And then you wanna to go to uh, this one right here, Jungle Scout, and you wanna just install the extension right here. Once you have installed the extension on your browser, you're gonna see that up here on all your extensions here. So if you don't see it right here, you can click on this icon right here, and then you should see it. So here I can see Jungle Scout, and you wanna make sure that this pin here is enabled so you can actually see it right here, and we can open it anytime we want when we are on the Amazon platform. All right, so now I'm logged into my Jungle Scout account here, where we're gonna start with our product research. I'm gonna show you two different methods how you can find products utilizing Jungle Scout and Amazon. The first one, you're gonna find this one a lot on YouTube. A lot of people show this um, with uh, Jungle Scout. It's kind of the, the main way how people filter uh, their database. The second one not is not as known, but it's a lot better to find products that other people are not finding. So let's look at the first one first. What you wanna do is you wanna go here to the left side, go to product research, and then you can either go to product database or opportunity finder that pretty much do the same thing, but the, you can put in more detailed filters in the product database. So we're gonna to go to product database right here. Then we're gonna just tick all the categories that make sense for us to look for. Not all categories are gonna be, are gonna be great for selling private label products. So for example, video games is probably not something you wanna look for, but let's just go through them. So appliances, um, beauty and personal care, cell phones as accessories, mostly very um, uh, saturated, or we can also look there, um, computers and accessories. I wouldn't sell food or anything, especially if you're beginning. Um, home and kitchen, kitchen and dining, office products, pet supplies, sports and outdoors, uh, toys and games, I wouldn't really look into that. Baby, um, let's do camera and photo, electronics, um, industrial and scientific, let's do that as well. Patio lawn, garden and tools and home improvement. So these are the categories that I would look into. And then here on the right side, we uh, have the product tier, so let's do standard. We don't wanna do oversize and also seller types, Amazon and FBA. Uh, and now here we have some filters. So as you've learned before, we wanna go for a price between 20 and $70. So here let's just type in 19 because many products are also sold uh, for 19.99. And then the max price, let's just put that as, um, we can also do 100, so maybe we find some good opportunities that are a bit out of our range, but still, if you have a good budget, you can still go for these as well. For the rank, we didn't talk about this before, but there's um, a rank where Amazon ranks every product uh, in the main category, like the ones that we have just uh, ticked right here, uh, the best seller rank. So the, the lower the rank, the, the more is sold in this specific product. And we really don't wanna go for products that have a very low best seller rank, like below 100, uh, because the competition is just too high. So we can type in 100 right here, but most products that are below the rank 100, they have too many reviews anyway, so we would rule them out uh, anyway. So then minimum sales, I, I like to go by revenue for the demand. So I'm gonna type in 6,000 as a minimum revenue right here. 
then you can also uh, go minimum and maximum reviews. Now our maximum reviews would be a thousand because um, otherwise it's just too much competition. So we type in a thousand right here. If you want to, you can also look for products that have a lower rating than maybe five stars, four and a half stars, because you wanna have them some improvement potential. However, I usually don't put anything in here because I don't wanna rule out all the products that have just a good rating. Weight, you can just type in 5.5 pounds, uh, just so you, you rule out all the products that are just very heavy and expensive to ship. Then sellers, we're gonna leave empty and then list quality score as well. So what we've done just now is we've used the database of, of Jungle Scout. We put in all of our criteria, so Jungle Scout will spit out all the, uh, the products that fit this criteria. So we can click on search right here. Now Jungle Scout has generated all the products that fit the criteria that you have just entered above. So the next step would be to just go through all these products manually and then decide on if this might be a good idea to sell on Amazon and private label it or not. So when we find a good product here that we might be able to sell, so these products are all not really looking uh, as a good idea to private label. So um, sometimes you're gonna find that there's a lot of same, same products coming up, for example, these screws right here. So if we wanna eliminate all these products that just keep coming up, it doesn't really fit our criteria. We can just take one keyword that they all have. So for this would be, for example, screws. So we just type in for exclude keywords here in the top, screws, and then do another search. And then these products shouldn't come up anymore. All right, so let's just go through some more products and maybe we wanna find one that might be a good example right here. So no caps. Let's maybe go to another page. So here we have over 2000 pages of results. Let's just type in a page, let's say 321, just a random page. And now let's see here, here we have some paddles, all right. Is that batteries? No, no, no. So here I found a product which might be worth looking into, which is this um, bird feeder. It's just something you hang in your garden and then the birds will come and eat your stuff. So once you find a product that you think uh, might be a good idea, what you wanna do is just click on this view on Amazon button right here, and then it will open up this product on Amazon. You can look at the price, the rating and so on. Now from this point on, I'm gonna um, go a lot more deeper later into what you're gonna do from here on out because here, from here on out, you're gonna try and analyze the market for this specific product right here. Now, before you're gonna do that and, and learn how to analyze product markets, I'm gonna show you another uh, research method uh, that I think is a lot better on how to find product ideas. So yeah, this would be the method on how to use the product database here on Jungle Scout to get some product ideas. Again, I'm not a big fan of this method. The reason being is because I think it's not really fun to do this stuff um, using the database. And also like the bigger reason is because um, if everybody just uses the same filters right here, everybody's just gonna get the same product list. So everybody's just gonna go through the same products and the chance of, of, of a lot of people uh, launching the same product is actually pretty high um, if everybody just uses the same filters right here on the database. So it's a lot better to use your own unique product research method where you get to a place where nobody else is going so you can find a product idea that nobody else has, has thought of. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to find those product ideas right now. So maybe you know the situation when you go to YouTube and you click on a random video or maybe you search for something, you click on it, and then you watch the video and then some time through, you look at the suggestions on the right side and then you see something interesting and you click on the suggestion and then you watch that video, then you click on another suggestion and then before you know it, you're watching some kind of random video about stuff that you didn't even know existed. This was kind of a way how you can discover something that you didn't even know existed. And that's the same approach that we wanna take finding our product opportunities. We wanna go down a random path and then we wanna end up at a place where there are products that we didn't even know existed. This is the place where you're gonna find all the product opportunities because nobody else did think of them. This method that we're gonna look at now as opposed to the other one, this is really a rabbit hole method going down different avenues at each step of the process. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a simple keyword and we're not gonna just come up with the keyword ourselves. We can either just go take a dictionary, uh, like put up a random page and then look at a random word and then just type in the word here 
in Jungle Scout. Now you don't actually need to get a dictionary, you can also use word generators here on uh, the internet. So for example, what you can do is type in object generator on Google, then click on one right here. And then for example, this website, you can just click on randomize and then you're gonna see just random words like this, like bone saw, washcloth, candy cane, map, just something like this. So what we can do is just take this random word and then we're gonna to go to Jungle Scout and now we're gonna use another tool here. We're gonna to go to um, Keywords and then we're gonna to go to Keyword Scout. And then we're gonna paste in our randomly generated word either from the dictionary, from the object generator, wherever you wanna go and we're gonna click on Search. Uh, Jungle Scout will just ger generate uh, a lot of keywords um, that are related to this keyword that we have just typed in that people are actually searching for on Amazon. So now we have a lot of ideas. So here we have world map, world maps for wall. So whenever you find something here that looks interesting, you would just again go to the Amazon uh, button right here and then you can find that search string right here on the top of the Amazon page. And here you can find the products that are related to this specific keyword. So then if you think um, this might actually be a good idea, you can just open up the products in a new tab. So open in a new tab right here, open in a new tab, and then just look at each of these products individually. So like this, you can also get product ideas. And then if at some point you find that this specific keyword is kind of a dead end and you're not gonna find anything good here, then you can just move on to another randomly generated keyword. However, I find that if you dig deep enough with each, um, with each keyword and category, you're gonna find some viable products at least that look good at first. Now, um, let's just do another keyword right here. Um, one that came up last time I was using this random object generator was um, neck, so the neck right here. So let's search for this one. And then I did find some, some interesting products here as well. So here we have neck fan, so let's open this up in a new tab. Portable fan, also interesting, neck stretcher. Um, neck massager, back massager, okay. So these are all categories that I definitely would wanna look into. So here I would just open up all these tabs and then go to the first one right here. And then here the first thing we see is some sponsored posts. So you don't wanna look at the sponsored ones when you're doing the research, you wanna look at the ones that are actually organically ranked here on the top. So here we can see these fans that you can put around your neck that basically blow some cold air up your head. It looks like this space is quite competitive just judging by how many reviews they have. So maybe we need to scroll further down to find a specific product that we might wanna look into. So let's actually go to neck massage right here because I believe um, this is where I looked into uh, last time a bit deeper. So here again, we can see some sponsored products on the top. And then we can see like this massager right here that you can basically put around your neck. And there are like a lot of time you're gonna find there are like similar products. And most of these um, people that are selling these are also just sourcing them somewhere from China, probably maybe from the same supplier even. And some of them are also using private labeling. So um, here we have maybe like this product, just so let's just open this one and look into this a bit further. Then let's see, we also have uh, I also see like these kinds of products a lot, like these um, kind of electric um, massagers. So let's open up this as well. So let's maybe look into this one first. The first thing that I see, it has a lot of ratings. That If you see a product that has a lot of ratings, doesn't mean you should rule it out immediately because maybe there are still other brands that don't have as many reviews, uh, but they're still making good amount of money and they're listed on the first page as well. So just because it has over a thousand reviews doesn't mean uh, immediately that we're gonna rule it out. But if everybody who's on the first page has like over a thousand reviews, then it's probably uh, too competitive. Now let's look at this product as well. This also looks like something we could private label. This one only has like nine reviews. So this might be less competitive. So let's kind of look into the market for this specific product. So now what we wanna do is we wanna find uh, the keyword that is most related to this specific product. Meaning when we type in the keyword here on the top, then only these types of products will show up in the search results. So this is probably uh, an intelligent neck massager with heat. So maybe let's try this one. So I'm just gonna take this and then just paste it in here in a new tab and just click on search. 
you want to ignore the first sponsored products again. So here are the sponsored ones. And then here are the organic search results. So here it looks like this is really kind of the keyword that leads to this specific product. So with this page right now, uh, we can now analyze the market of this specific product. As you can see, all these products are very similar. They are kind of like a, a necklace that you can just wear and they have these two pads, which is kind of like electric massage or something like that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Chrome extension of Jungle Scout. So here we're gonna to go to the top right here. Actually, we're gonna close all the other tabs. So otherwise my computer is probably gonna just be too slow here. All right, now we're gonna click on the Jungle Scout extension right here, and then it will open up all the products here on this specific page. So we're just gonna to need to give it some time so it loads all the products. Okay, so now once this button here um, is not gray anymore, it's uh, all loaded and we can actually start to look at it. I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger like this. And then the first thing we wanna do is we wanna sort them by bestseller rank, meaning that the one that sell the most are gonna be at the highest right here. So here you can see rank. So we're just, we're just gonna click here on rank and then it will uh, sort it from lowest to highest rank. And then what we wanna do is we wanna go through all these products and delete the ones that aren't the product that we are actually looking into. So we're looking into this electric pulse neck massager, uh, as you can see right here. This is probably, this looks pretty much the same. So uh, we're gonna leave this. Then this one here is something else. This one would be the neck massager. So we're just gonna click on the cross right here. So it's gonna be gone from our list. And we're just gonna go down um, this also actually looks a bit different. So as, if you look closely to the sides, it doesn't have those three dots or actually I think this is photoshopped in. So I'm gonna leave this in right here. It looks like the same product. Um, this one as well, this one as well. This one it looks actually different. So I'm gonna just uh, delete this one here. And you're just gonna keep doing this until you only are left with the, the main products right here. So now I've deleted all the products that are actually a different kind of product because we are looking for this specific one. And uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna analyze the market based on the data that we can see here. So we're just gonna go from left to right through all of these um, columns right here. First of all, the brand. So as we can see here, we have multiple different brands selling the same kind of product. So the first one would be Clitellius, then Yomi Soy, then Skin Kit. So this is actually a good sign because then we can see people are buying from multiple different brands and they're like not loyal to just one brand. Meaning that if we enter with our own brand, we have a good chance of being able to compete with these brands that are currently selling. The next thing we wanna look at is the price. So like we've said before, we wanna look at something between 20 and $70 optimally. And the top competitor here is selling for $38, which is a pretty good price to sell for. There's also somebody who's selling for $55. This is probably like a more premium one. In terms of price range, it's definitely in our, in our criteria. Then we also have the revenue. So we use the revenue to, de to um, determine if there's actually demand for this product. So the top selling product right here with 32 sales a month is doing just over 33,000 approximately uh, in revenue per month, which is uh, not that bad. Like it's, it could be more uh, for the top selling product definitely, but it's, it's something that is in the range that might be worth going for. With our range, we said we don't wanna go with for every anything that is below $6,000 in revenue per month. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is um, the rating number. So here we can see there are two products that actually have over a thousand reviews. Now, judging by the review, like they have four stars and the top one has also four stars. So if we are able to maybe address the issues that they had, because they could definitely have a better rating, we might be able to still get into the market. And you can also see that they're, like this product right here is making just over 7,000 in revenue with only 45 um, reviews. And this, for example, like this one is making over $9,000 with only nine reviews. So there's definitely potential here to get into the market. So I wouldn't be thrown off too much just because some competitors have over a thousand reviews. Um, and you can see also that the rating is pretty low actually, like 3.8, 3.4. So 
there's probably a lot of problems with this product. A lot of people are unsatisfied with this product. So if, if you're going to notice that it's going to be very hard to satisfy your customers with this specific product, it's probably worth it not to go for it. However, if you're going to find a way how you can improve it and actually address the issues that the people have when you read the reviews, this might actually be an opportunity for you to get into the market with a better product. Now, I quickly pulled up another product right here, which is this eye massager. So I didn't even know this existed, but apparently you can just put this on your face and then it massages you and maybe it's good for headaches and stuff. Um, so the thing I want to show you here is that you can see that this Renpo, Renfo brand, they're really dominating the market for this eye massager right here because they are like really, they've taken the majority of the market share as you can see by the revenue numbers, by the daily sales and so on. Um, there are other brands also making money, but compared to what the main brand here is making, it's really, it's really... And not that much. So this would be a situation where I wouldn't go into the market if I see there's like one dominating brand, which is probably going to be very hard to compete with because eventually the long-term goal is to become the number one brand in your niche for your product because that's where the most amount of money actually is. And here's an example of another product, this eye wand. There's also some kind of massager, like a stick that you can put on your eye that massages the eyes. And I just wanted to show you this because um, this is an example of where there's just not enough demand. So as you can see here, the revenue numbers are pretty low. Like the top product here is making just over $6,000. So um, this would be a situation where even though the rating numbers here are very low, so it might be easier to get into the market, but still, it's not worth your time and effort and money to, to try and cr scrape some pennies right here because there's just not enough demand in this specific market for this specific product. Now, for the rest of this video, I did choose an example product that I found before I even started recording here. And I'm going to sh quickly explain to you how I found it. I basically was looking for some kind of gloves or something like that. And I didn't, I don't, don't even remember. I just noticed that in the results right here, I just found something where it says survival gloves or something like that. And then it came like to my mind that survival might be a good niche to look into. So I typed in uh, survival tools right here on the top. Like this is also, uh, when you just browse Amazon, you just randomly get ideas and you type it in and then you find random products. And like, for example, if you go to this one right here and then um, you check it out and then maybe you go to the bottom and you just go to, um, to this section right here where you can see the recommendations or the sponsored posts even. This, this is like the sponsored ones, the ads. And if you go even further down, you can see related to this item. And here you're going to find a lot of other stuff as well. So here you can see this product right here, Survival Settlers Wrench Tool, um, is the one that I actually chose for this video. So let's click on this one right here. So here it opened up. So here I see a very low price point. This is actually quite a cheap version of this one. Um, so what I've done here is it looked to me like I didn't even know what it is. It looked interesting and it... Uh, foremost it looked very simple so I, I thought like there's not much that can go wrong with this product again when we see a product that we find interesting the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to try and find the, the keyword where when we type that in only this specific product comes up because this is how we're going to analyze the market for this specific product so here we we'll just look at the title survival settlers wrench tool bushcraft so I think what I've entered is just settlers tool and then I think only those ones came up. So we want to ignore the sponsored ones here on the top. As you can see, all the results is pretty much the same product right here. So um, now we're going to again go to the Jungle Scout extension right here. Click there and then it will just open up all the data for all the products on this page. So I've already loaded the results, um, sorted everything by ranks to have the lowest rank here on the top, which is the best selling one. And then um, also have deleted the products that don't really are the same product here as the one we want to look into. So this is a kind of like a survival bushcraft product that you can use to kind of build wooden houses and stuff like that. I didn't even know that existed actually, but apparently it's a very convenient tool to survive in the wild basically. So um, again, we want to look at the market. So first, do we have multiple competing brands? Yes, we have like this main one right here, Wayland and Ritzter, Peck Stay and stuff like that. And um, 
then the price point is rather on the lower end of our optimal range, but still like the top competitor is able to sell this for thirty-eight dollars, which is which is great. And they're uh, making like forty-three point five thousand in revenue per month. Um, when I looked at this first, it was like eighty thousand. So um, they're easily making like ten to twenty twenty-five thousand dollars in profit per month just from this one product. The rating number is all right, so it's almost a thousand. And um, but you know the, the second competitor right here, which is already making 10k in revenue per month, they don't even have a logo on the product, so they they're not even really private labeling. They do have like a brand name in front of it, but they don't really have a logo. Um, but they still have a lot, a lot of good reviews. So. Uh, it looks to me like it would be possible to enter this market with really good branding and marketing and a good listing and stuff like that. So that's kind of what I looked at. And now we're going to look at each of the nine criteria in detail for this specific product to decide on if it's going uh, it's going to remain on our product opportunity list or if you're going to move on to another product. 